putting the rod together, this particular rod is a four-piece rod, and where the pieces join together is called the furl. So this joint right here is the furl, and we slide the small one into the big part and line it up. What I'm looking at here is the hook keeper. This isn't actually a guide. The line doesn't go through the hook keeper. It's to keep the hook out of trouble when we're walking with the rod after it's all strung up. So that's for the hook, not for the fly line. But you can line up the, the guides with that on most rods. And then it's just a matter of going from big to little as we work our way up the rod, putting each of the sections together and lining up the guides before we snug it in for a good tight fit right here to make sure that the guides are all going up the same side of the rod blank. And when we get to the tip top, which is this top section right here, we're going to do the same thing. Slide it on, line up the guides, and then snug it together for a good fit. This has to be snug so it doesn't come off while we're casting it. Now we're going to put the reel on the rod. This is the um, reel seat on the rod. It's at the end of the rod handle where the reel sits on the rod, where it's attached to the rod. This reel is set up for me, so it's set up for left hand wind, which is how I prefer to wind. You can wind the reel with either your left hand or your right one. This particular one is set up for left hand. So I'm going to slide the reel foot up under the grip into that opening right there and hang on to that and come down here and slide the hood. That band right there has a little swelled opening that receives the other end of the reel foot right there and then this screw band screws up tight to hold everything into place. It locks the reel onto the rod so it doesn't fall off when we're casting. Okay, that's called up locking because you, the hardware screws upward to lock the reel on the rod. This is the post. Um, sometimes it's a line guard here, but when you get ready to run the line up through the rod guides, you want to make sure that your fly line and your leader are under the post. Otherwise, it'll be on top and it'll, it'll wear, it will wear through the fly line. So all of the line and the leader wants to be under the, the post right here or the line guard. And then as you pull it off and you get ready to line up the, to run the line up through the guides, you go directly to the first guide, which is this one. This is called a stripping guide, bypassing that hook keeper that we talked about. So this is the first guide that the line goes through. Okay, when you get ready to run the line up through the, the rod guides though, it's much easier if you come back here to the reel and pull some fly line off the reel. This is the monofilament leader, this clear section of, of monofilament here. It's usually about nine feet long. This puts distance between the end of the fly line and the fly, and it allows us to fool the fish because this is hard for the fish to see. You hope the fish doesn't see that. Common sense might tell us that without any yarn on the end of this leader fly, you would want to put the end of the monofilament up through the guides. And you can do that, but it's very hard to keep a hold of. It's slippery, it's easy to lose it, and it falls back out through the guides. It's much easier to come back here on the fly line, somewhere close to the leader, and put a little loop in the line, like that. Pull a couple of yards of line off the reel. And then walk that loop up through the guides. It's much easier to see. It's thicker and softer to work with. You're less likely to miss a guide. Now we're just going to walk right up the rod, putting the line through each guide. And when we get to the tip top, we're going to take a second while we're there and pull the line through and pull the leader through. 
Because this monofilament leader will sometimes have knots where we've added sections of line to it. And you want all of that out beyond the rod tip and now it's going to be easier to start casting. When we get ready to cast, we're going to come back here to the reel and we're going to pull some line off the reel. And I have this line marked at 25 feet with a permanent black marker. You'll see this, the mark coming up here, this is it. I've just measured back 25 feet of fly line. This doesn't include the leader. This is just fly line. And this is the mark that tells me that when this mark is in the rod tip, I'm casting 25 feet of fly line. And it's important when you're practicing your casting in the beginning to work with the same amount of line every time you go out to practice so your rhythm and your timing doesn't change from one time to the next. So you can take your fly line and mark it with a permanent marker and it will eventually wear off if you don't want to keep it on the line. But you'll find that you refer to that mark a lot when you're practicing your casting and when you're fishing. So now we're going to pull this line through the rod tip so that that black mark stays in the rod tip. So I'm just going to come up here, pull this through. And watch for that mark. I see it coming up through the guides. Here it comes. Okay, and there it is in the rod tip. Now when I stretch this line out in the grass in front of me, I'll know that I'm casting exactly 25 feet of fly line plus the leader, which is going to be about nine feet long. So we'll stretch this out. We've got a piece of yarn on the end that's going to represent the fly. It's, by watching the yarn, we're going to be able to tell if our cast turns over, if it straightens out, if the fly lands on the end of the cast instead of falling back on the cast or back on the line or the leader. We'll be able to see all of that happening with the yarn. And we've used a clinch knot to tie the yarn on with. It's a very simple knot. You may already know it if you've done some fishing before. It's a knot that we use to tie our lures and, and plugs on with as well as our flies. So this is going to be stretched out the end of the rod, the end of the fly line. And now we're ready to get started with our casting. Now we're going to pick up our rod and this is going to be our starting point right here. You want a little extra line, a little slack line here, and we'll be using that in a little bit. First of all, how we hold the rod is going to be very important. We want to hold it so our thumb is on top of the rod handle, right up there, and our, our fingers are comfortably wrapped around it. If I were left-handed, it would look like this. We're going to talk about a very sharp, quick stop of the rod tip at the, at the end of the back cast and at the end of the forward cast. And you'll find with your thumb up on top that you can power the cast and stop it better than with any of your other fingers. So we're going to hold the rod parallel out over the grass. We're going to put our thumb right on top with a comfortable grip. We're going to keep our elbow low. Our uh, elbow shouldn't be up high. It's going to stay low. That's we're going to use the length of the rod, the rod leverage to help us make the cast so that we can be comfortable through the day. We're going to use as little wrist as possible moving through the casting stroke and just a quick snap or a quick little turn of the wrist right here and right here to apply that power stroke, that quick speed up and stop at each end here and here. And you'll notice that my hand is moving through about an 18 inch casting stroke from here to here. So at the end of my back cast, my hand is back here, my, my hand is back here behind my shoulder. So don't get locked into using all of only wrist because you can't cast much more than about 25 feet and you'll find that you develop a lot of arm problems by doing that. 
So your elbow tends to be the pivot and your hand and your forearm is moving through the casting stroke with a quick sharp stop here and here. Okay, we're going to keep our arm out to the side so that the line travels away from us so that we're, don't, we're not worried about the line and the fly coming in and hitting us. We're going to keep it out to the side at about a 45 degree angle. So here we go. We're going to tuck the line under a couple of fingers of our rod hand. I'm right-handed, so in the beginning my left hand isn't going to have much of a job. If it feels like it needs to do something, we can let it hold some line. But this is our starting point right here. And we're going to bring the rod back to a quick sharp stop here and push it forward to a sharp stop in the front. We have to come to a complete dead stop at each end in order to allow the line to get back behind the rod tip on the back cast and out in front of the rod tip on the forward cast. Here and here. You'll notice that the rod tip is traveling back and forth on a straight parallel path from A to B and back again. There'll be lots of times where it, it won't be up that high. If I'm trying to get under a bridge abutment or under a tree limb or on a very windy day, my cast may be low. If I've got wind coming at my right side, I may cast over my left shoulder. But wherever the rod tip is, there should be that straight parallel path or line from one stop to the next. Okay. That allows us to develop line speed. Line speed, speed is the secret or the trick to anything that we try to do in fly casting. The line has to be traveling fast enough in order to get to the fish or get to the target. Sometimes we want it to go very fast, other times we want it to go a little bit slower. How fast the line goes or travels is determined by how quickly and how sharply you stop the rod tip here and here. That determines line speed. If I stop it very quickly, the line goes faster. If I slow down, the line slows down. So that's line speed. When you're practicing your casting, you want to get out in the yard just like we are here. Get your 25 feet of fly line plus your leader. Make three or four casts. One, count your forward stops. Two, three, four, and lay it down. On number four, whatever cast it is that you choose to fish, we're simply stopping the rod tip, allowing the cast to straighten out. The fly gets to the end of the cast. You can see the yarn going to the end of the cast. And as it starts to fall to the water, we're going to bring our rod tip down along with it. Okay, so it's important to keep your rod tip at about eye level until that cast turns over, straightens out, and starts to fall to the water. If we bring the tip down too fast or too soon, we'll smack the water, the line won't have a chance to go straight or turn over, and we'll scare the fish. On the other hand, if we keep the rod tip up too high, it'll flutter down and we can't get the distance that we're hoping for. Eye level is just about perfect most of the time. We'll stop the rod at eye level, let the cast open up, and then come down to the water with the cast and the rod tip. Then we're going to pick up the cast. When we pick it up, it's a, it's a smooth, progressive stroke, starting from slow to fast, from here to here. Back and forth a couple of times, and lay it down. Okay, when you're practicing, just work with three or four false casts. False casts are the practice casts that go back and forth. These are false casts. And lay it down.